Hello everybody! In this Python tutorial we're going to go over how to create geographic maps. We will be using BaseMap, and BaseMap is geared toward the needs of earth scientists, oceanographers, meteorologists, and for those in other fields such as biology, geology, and geophysics. But it is not limited to science applications, and it can be used for plotting all kinds of data. Now perhaps one of the easiest ways to make sure that you have everything you need to use BaseMap is to use the spider IDE and to download the spider IDE through the anaconda package and you can get that at this web address here www.continuum.io and I do believe you can download the spider IDE for a good number of the operating systems out there such as Windows Mac OS and Linux. Now another good website to use for reference is the Matplot base map site and this website will give you all kinds of information on how to create specific types of maps. Okay so let's go to this website and show you a few examples. So we have the website pulled up here and this is the main page so let's go to the example gallery and you can see as we scroll through some of the different types of maps that you can create such as a contour lines map a map that shows rainfall or precipitation, a mean sea level pressure map, a map that tracks hurricanes, a topography map, and another topography map. Here we have a map that shows locations of Argo float devices, and I believe these Argo float devices measure sea level change and climate change, but don't quote me on that. Here we have an SST and ice analysis map. Here we have a wind vectors map, an SLP and wind barbs map, and a map that shows the Great Circle from New York to London. And one last map, a day and night map. Okay, so you can see that you can create all kinds of different maps. And a lot of these maps are science related, but you can do all kinds of cool things with the base map and not just scientific applications. Okay? So now let's go back to our spider IDE. And the first thing you want to do when you're setting up your map is you want to import the modules that you're going to need. So the first module that we're going to use, we want to import using the from mpl toolkits.basemap and then we'll just import the base map. Next we want to import the matplotlib pyplot and let's go ahead and import numpy. Okay, so once you have your modules imported that you're going to need, you want to go ahead and create an instance of the base map class and then you want to set up the base map and then fill in the arguments to set up everything the way that you need it and want it. And you can see here there are lots of different arguments and settings that you can set. However, to set up a very basic map, one thing that you can do to keep it simple is to set the projection to a map type, okay? So let's go back to the website, and if we go to setting up the map, these are all of the different map types that you can set up here, okay? And if you'd like to see what each one looks like, just click on it, and it will show you a visualization. And if you want to know the abbreviation for the projection, just look right here, and for each type of map, you will see the abbreviation, okay? So we can go to another type of map, you can see a visualization, and the abbreviation for the projection is given here. Let's show you one more example. Here is another visualization, and the abbreviation for this projection is given right here. Okay, so once you have your base map set up the way you want it, then you can begin to use your instance, and in this case we've named it M1 for map1, and you can call all kinds of methods that will overlay items onto your map. Okay, before we draw our first map, let's go over one more important thing. If you're using Spider, you want to go up to your Preferences, and then you want to go to your IPython console, then go to Graphics, and make sure that this back end here is set to anything except for the inline. Now you can use inline, however the pictures will be real small and the quality won't be very good and you won't be able to zoom in and all that good stuff. So you probably want to set it to any of these options here, like automatic, QT, tkinter, something like that. And then you want to hit apply, and then hit OK, and then restart your application. Okay, so now let's go ahead and select the code for our first map. And let's go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like. So here we have a visualization of our first map. 
Now, if you want to add the country borders, access your instance and use the draw countries method. So now you can see we have all of the country borders. Next, let's go over some different types of map backgrounds. Here we have one called blue marble. And that looks like this. Here we have another one called Shade Relief. And that looks like this. Here we have another one called E Topo or E Topo. And that one looks like this. Next, if you want to draw rivers, then you can type out your variable, use a dot to access the draw rivers, and then you can even set your color here. So we've set the color to blue. And you can see all of the rivers here with the blue lines. You can also add a fill continents effect. Again, just use your variable dot to access the fill continents and set your colors. And that looks like this. So we filled the continents with the color of beige and we set the lakes to the color of blue. You can also use the draw map boundaries method. We set the color argument to green and the line width to five and we set the other arguments to none. And you can see now we have our green border around our map. For our next example, let's go over how to draw the latitude and longitude lines. So here we have another instance of the base map class. We put in the projection map type with the abbreviation CYL. We use our instance of the class to draw the coastlines. Then we used our instance to access the draw parallels method and the draw meridians method. Now inside of these methods, we used the numpy and we used a range and this arrange method will give us the start, stop and step for how to arrange and display the latitude and longitude lines. So we want our line for the parallels to start at zero and go to 90 and to increment by 10. And we want our meridians to start at negative 180, to go to 180, and to increment by 30, okay? And then if you want all of your labels to show, just use a list and put one for all of the different types of labels. If you don't want your labels to show, then you would just put zeros here. And you can see we have our latitude and longitude lines placed onto our map and labeled. Now for our next example, we're gonna add some more criteria when we set up our base map. So we create our instance, M3 for map three. We access the base map. We went ahead and set the projection to the map type, CYL. And then we set our latitude and longitude to certain numbers to only include a portion of the larger map, okay? So this first criteria here, the LLCRNRLAT, is the latitude of lower left-hand corner of the desired map domain. And you can see for each of these, we have what the abbreviation means. So this one is the latitude of upper right-hand corner. This one here is the longitude of lower left-hand corner, and so on, okay? So we set the values for those four areas. We went ahead and set our resolution, and there are several different types of resolution that you can use. So C is for crude, L is for low, I is for intermediate, H is for high, and F is for full. And we'll show you what the suppressed ticks does here in just a minute, okay? Now for this example, we've gone ahead and we've drawn the coastlines, the country borders, and the states. And you can see now we have zoomed in from our larger map onto the US. Now earlier we set the suppressed tick marks to false to show these numbers and tick marks here. Now if you don't want those to show, you can just set this to true. And you can see now those tick marks with those latitude and longitude values are now gone. Okay, so depending on where you want to zoom in on the larger map, that's where you would set these values here. You just need to find out the latitude and longitude values for the area that you want to zoom in on, okay? So for our next example, let's go over how to plot locations with labels. So we went ahead and set up our base map with the criteria that we want. We've drawn the coastlines, the countries, and the state borders. 
And in this case, what we want to do is we want to get the latitude and longitude for three locations, Chicago, San Diego, and New York. And then we want to plot those with a dot and also overlay some text onto the map with the city names. So we've gone ahead and we've put our latitude and longitude values into lists. And then we access our instance and we use the plot. So for our first argument, we put in the longitudes and that functions similar to the x-axis on a Cartesian coordinate plane. So that would be side to side, horizontal, or east and west. The second argument we put in the latitudes, and that functions similar to the y-axis, so up and down, or vertical, or north and south. And for our third argument here, in single quotes we put an R, and that stands for red, and then we put a little O, and that will be the actual symbol that will be plotted onto the map. Okay. Next, to plot text onto the map, we use the PLT and then a dot to access the text method. Then you put in your latitude and longitudes and make sure that you put in your longitude number first because this method expects the values in XY form. So the longitude would be the X value here and the latitude would be the Y value. Then go ahead and put in your actual label that you want then set your font size, and then set HA and VA to center, and then set your color. And if you would like other colors, here's a list of the colors. So B is for blue, G is for green, R is for red, C is for cyan, M is for magenta, Y is for yellow, K is for black, and W is for white. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've set up our text overlays for Chicago, San Diego, and New York. Let's select all of our code and run it. And you can see we have the red dots placed for each city as well as the text overlay. So we have San Diego, Chicago, and New York. For our last example, let's go over how to create a scatter plot onto the map. So the first thing we did is we created a list of latitude and longitude coordinates for the top 25 largest cities in the world. Then we created an area variable, and inside of a list, we put number values that will correspond to the size of the dot for each element of the scatter plot. Then we created a list of colors, and basically this will just somewhat randomly disperse the colors among each dot. So next we went ahead and created our instance, set the base map up the way we wanted it, we've drawn our coastlines, we've drawn our countries, then we use the PLT dot to access the scatter. We put in our longitude coordinates here, which correspond to this list here. Then we put in our latitude coordinates for our second argument, which corresponds to this list here. Our third argument, the area, will reference this list here and that will determine the size of the dots placed onto the map. Then we put in our colors and then we used an alpha value to determine the opaqueness of the dots or to determine how see-through they are. And here you can see a scatter plot map with the different dots and the different sizes of the dots indicate the size of that city by population. Now those are just a few examples of the things you can do with base map and there are many many more cool things you can do with base map and if you want to find out more about those as we mentioned just go ahead and check out the matplotlib.org slash base map website here. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.